character and effects Tron and today I'm going to show you how to create a bowl of ramen really quick with a new rope dynamics instead of R26 and actually how to use it with a cloner. It's kind of a janky way to do it but it works so we're going to take a look at that and we're going to create this scene right here. Be cool. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. So if we hit play here, see all of our splines come in and they just start pouring into this bowl and they're going over our chopsticks and they're landing in our bowl and spilling it onto the floor. And resting there as well and then our chopsticks are going to start lifting this up and just pull out those noodles then we hit pause right before it's done and there we go so we'll take a look at creating this effect so we've just created a bowl real quick and we've got some chopsticks in there so the first thing we're going to do is right click go to simulation and choose collider this little hanger icon here so we have that on there and we want to turn the friction up to 1.5 for that. And we're going to put that on both our chopsticks and we're also going to put that on our bowl here. Okay, so let's do that for the, each of these. And then now we need to create our noodles. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a helix. Go up here to this rectangle, click and hold and choose helix. So we're going to go helix, we're going to go to XZ so it's going up and down. I'm going to do the start radius of something really small, like 24. And for the end radius, we're going to go all the way down to zero. So you can see we have this kind of thicker spiral and it spirals up. Basically, this is going to help it as it falls. So it doesn't even have to worry about colliding with itself as much. It's just going to fall in this nice pattern and actually unrolled. So we won't have to deal with the self collisions as much on that initial landing. You know, it's not that big a difference. You could go totally straight if you want for a helix. Just do zero, zero for the radiuses. Or you know you can make it wiggly and make it the same top and bottom but we're going to go with 24 and we're going to go with the end angle of 1080 so we've got a couple of spirals here and then for the height we're going to go 500. the helix starts off with an intermediate point of uniform style instead of adaptive which is actually what we want so it's going to be evenly distributed across our lines and we want to turn that number all the way down to one Okay, so what I've seen a lot of people do is they take this and they throw it into an inside and they throw it into a sweep. And the problem is, is when you do it this way, yes, that makes sense. But when you throw that into a cloner and you throw your dynamics on there, it doesn't work. And so we're actually not going to do it that way. We are going to just keep our helix by itself here. And we're going to right click and go to simulation tags and we're going to go to rope. And for our rope, we're going to say zero bendiness, zero stretchiness, 1.5 for the friction, 5 for the radius, and 0.1 for the mass. Now, it's important to know your scene scale and stuff when you're using these dynamics because a lot of times, if we hit play on this, you'll see our rope just collides down on the ground, which is nice. It's exactly what we want. It makes a little spiral of pasta in our bowl there. And so if we hit Control D and go to Simulations, you want to make sure that your scene scale is set to one centimeter if you're working in a one centimeter scene scale. By default, this is set to 100. And by default, when we do this, we get kind of these weird issues. It doesn't look like we have issues here, but it does when we start having a lot of these collide into each other and stuff. And then the mass really messes with it and basically all of it's too heavy. Uh, so a scene scale of one when you're using a scene scale of one. I find works well now obviously I'm new to this just like everybody else is so I'm still figuring things out so there may be things that I think are affecting it that aren't just quite yet but we will be able to get this ramen noodle goal result if you do as I do and we'll go over these settings here in just a second so what we need to do now with our helix selected is we need to right click and go to render tags and we're going to use a redshift object tag and you see when we have a redshift object tag on a spline, it pops up with this curve option here. And basically this is saying, oh, I can render this down as geometry at render time rather than doing it in the scene. We can say a thickness of five, which is that same radius that we put here for our rope. And so now if we hit render on this, you don't see anything in the viewport, but if we hit render on this, you see our noodle has geometry and we can actually see it. And that's exactly how this works. It renders out that geometry 
at render time, which means we're able to put a lot more of these in our scene before it starts slowing down because it's, it has it, it does a better job of calculating splines versus geometry, and so it makes the geometry afterwards. And because we have our radius set to five, they shouldn't interact or overlap, intersect with each other too much because this is based on the rope dynamics and not physical geometry. So whether the geometry is there or not, it thinks it's there. So now what we need to do is we can actually just throw this into a cloner. And it looks like it's going to work. And we hit play. And that doesn't work either. But there is a way to fix this. And it's kind of bizarre. Create a spline. Doesn't matter what kind. You're going to click and drag the exact same rope expression tab onto that. Put your cloner inside of that so it's a child of that. And then we can just turn off this rectangle. So we added it and got rid of it, but we made the cloner a child of it. And so now if we slide our cloner up, we hit play, it works. <laughs> I don't know why that works, but creating it as a child works. I tried putting the sweep and the spline back inside the cloner and doing the same thing. It doesn't work. I don't know why once you add that sweep, it's just like one too many levels for it to work. I tried to do the spline trick with the sweep inside of the cloner inside of this trick and it still didn't work. So the only way I've gotten this to work so far is just to do the redshift render tag with this object here. But the cloner inside of a spline with the same tag, turn off the spline and now we have a, a working spaghetti. So now we can come in here and up these count to 12 and 12, change the size to say 20 and 40 for the X and the Z. Now we have a whole bunch of pasta over our bowl. And if we hit play, it will be a little sluggish, but it will work. So we have over 100 noodles pouring into our bowl. So there we go. So now we've got it pretty close. And so what we need to do is just you know, adjust this a little bit, pull this over a bit. And what we're going to do is we need to go to control D and go into our settings of our simulation tab. And we want to make sure we just have enough sub steps and stuff for this to work, but not so many that it slows down so much that it freaks out. So I have found that a good balance is sub steps of 10, iterations at four, smoothing iterations at two, collision passes at three, post collision passes at three and polish iterations at two. So basically this is going to say, you know, run the dynamics and then smooth it out a little bit like that. Kind of like accuracy wise, how is this going to work? And the more sub steps, the more accurate it's probably going to be and iterations. And then we're going to get into collision passes. And so it's like when it's colliding with itself, you know, how is it, how much, how low of an error threshold does it need to have? And then the post collision passes are like when it's clipping into itself, is it how many passes do we need for it to go and try to fix itself? So I found that these values are pretty good. So now that this is in a cloner, what we can do is we can go to MoGraph and go to effectors and we can use a random effector to kind of add some randomness to this. So they're not all hitting at the same time and unfolding the same way kind of a thing. So we're going to go to random. We're going to go to parameters and we're going to say, uh, 50 and we say 200 in the Y so some of them fall first some of them fall later and then we're going to say for the rotation we want there to be a little bit of difference we're just going to say one 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 just so they're all not hitting at the exact same angle and so now if we hit play you'll see it takes a little time then it will go yeah I like that I like how some of the noodles miss the bowl since we have something we like we're going to grab our ropes here and both of this, we're going to select this, control click, control click, and we're going to say cache scene. So this is going to bake these dynamics. That way we can actually just scrub through our timeline and see this rather than having to play out the animation every time. So now we can just scrub through. We can see our spaghetti fall. And then for my chopsticks, all I did is I had them resting. And then I keyframed them to move away. So they just go because they have a higher friction on them, they're just going to stick to the noodles and we'll be able to create this nice noodle look here. And we can do more noodles. It's amazing how, how over 100 noodles really doesn't fill up the bowl very much. Okay, so let's come in here and change this to 2,000 for the noodles. And we've changed the number up to 3 for this. And we'll hit play. We have much longer noodles, so maybe we'll be able to fill up our bowl a little bit here. 
So the length of the helix and the uniform inter intermediate points are gonna be important. So if you come in here and you notice your noodles aren't bending the way they should, you're gonna need more points. So just increase this number. And anyway, we can go into our simulation and turn down a lot of those settings that we did to speed this up. It won't be as accurate, but it would definitely speed up. Look at this, look at this handful of noodles. See if I can get redshift to render. This is more like the, the bite that I go for when I'm eating pasta. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really cool. So there you go. You've got 2,000 centimeter long noodles. We've got oh, like 144 of them in here, and it's running real, relatively, really fastly. It looks really well. Uh, pretty awesome. It helps. If you can figure out a way to make this work with the sweep and the cloner, please let me know. Uh, I cannot get it to work. So put the cloner inside of a rectangle here and then put your same tag on that and then just turn that off and that makes the cloner work correctly. Uh, you do need to make sure your cloner is an instance rather than render instance and this will work exactly how you want it to. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content and ring that bell for sure to be notified when I'm coming out with more content. Um, See you guys next time.